Uh, hi, Mr. John Poole. <laughs> Hello, Marcus. <laughs> hey, wonderful to see You're you. Lovely to see you too. I mean, can I just say, I, th I think these these podcasts you're doing are, are lovely. I think they're really, really good. Um, I've watched a few of them and, and it's almost like a, I don't know, like a bit of a self-help sort of group counselling thing for, <laughs> for, for musicians who are not able to get out there and do their thing. But it's, it's a beautiful thing you're doing, honestly. It's, you're reaching out and you're, you're doing something really, truly positive. So well done you. <laughs> oh, oh, thank, thank you for saying that because I really have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. it's the best way <laughs> don't never overthink it <laughs> it usually it'll usually work man. You know, that's fantastic yeah you know um uh, john i i don't know much about get all other than the few things that i've read on wikipedia and also like what is kind of most important to me i met you once and just for what felt like maybe a few minutes really even though we weren't it were on a ship together for a few days right but that's they... right yeah well we're, we're, i think we we have a we have a friend in common don't we uh Car carvis carvis tarabi um uh but yeah um I, I i remember i think i chatted to you at the i think there was a, like an after show party type type thing and it, it was one of those things where the music was loud so and we were <laughs> trying to talk to each other and um uh i was particularly interested in the whole stick thing you know and mm -hmm. i think i was quizzing you about how do you get your head around the completely different shapes and stuff which is uh mm -hmm. and i think you were you were kind of <laughs> give me a bit, a bit of a cheeky little lesson there which was good you know <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but yeah it was uh, so we yeah we did speak very briefly then yeah yeah you know i, I, I watched you i watched you with uh, with stick man i think i think you're great i think you're brilliant <laughs> Thank you. you. You know, my memory is really bad, so I, I don't remember the content of our conversation, but what I'm very good at, I get like really like a very strong sense of people and sort of like the also the kind of vibe and relationship that, um, you know, like like and with you, it was like like the instant friendship, let's say, like really instant. Oh. Yeah, and well, that's uh, lovely to hear. Thank you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm right back at you. <laughs> No, really. So, I mean, that's, that's lovely. And I, I, I didn't really know, uh, know who you were, and I, I didn't even know that you were the bass player for Life Science on that, on that ship. Um, oh and yeah, because, yeah. And I, I had not seen you guys there. I did not see you guys on the ship, so I can't, can't say anything about that band really. But yeah, um, You know what happened was that um, very interestingly, um, you may know that I, I, I was on tour with Devin Townsend. That's and, right. Yeah. And like in one conversation I had with him, he, he mentioned John Poole. I was thinking, is that the same guy? Right. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, we spoke, we've, we've chatted quite a bit in the part uh, on email and um, I, I, I met him briefly backstage at a Wild Hearts gig. I don't, do, you, do you know the Wild Hearts? They're a, a rock I, I do a little bit. Yeah, I do a little bit. Yeah. And, well, and Devin. I, I, I used to play with them and Devin also used to play with them, but we weren't in the band at the same time. So, mm. uh, so we have a bit of shared history, but we never yeah. kind of overlapped. You know, you know he, he seems to be a, a big fan of yours, um, oh, especially yeah. of your bass playing, which wow. uh, I found very interesting. Yes. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, God, that's lovely to know. I mean, I, the, the, the funny thing is, is that, I mean, I, I, cause I, I mean, the first thing I did that I think anyone would have known was I was in Cardiacs, uh, you know, the band Cardiacs. I was in them for like 12 years and I, from when I was 21, but I was the guitarist in that band because that was my first instrument. Um, and I, uh, I'd been playing bass as well as a, as a child, but it was only later on that every job I got seemed to be for people that wanted bass players that were, playing in a kind of certain melodic kind of fashion or, or left of center fashion. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, so yeah, I've, I've sort of accidentally become a bass player over the years. Yeah, I was going to ask because it uh, appears to me that, or, or let's even say like my prediction, like not knowing much about you, as I've said, like a few, a few times already, is yeah. that I guess that you are a real music lover. 
you your your motivation is your love for music and you're not kind of like married to a specific instrument so um no. uh, no you know you play all sorts you play drums and and keys probably also guitar and bass right and you sing yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, well, I've, yeah, I've been learning to sing over more recent years, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all right at the kind of backing vocals and harmonies and things like that. And uh, I guess in terms of lead vocals, I, I possibly have <laughs> putting it kind, well, kindly to myself. Uh, no, but but anyway, it's kind of uh, it's. A, I guess I've got a style of some sort, but I'm not a I'm not a great singer. No, not really. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have a good. Uh, I'm not a technically good singer, but I probably have a, a style of, of some of sorts, you know, something. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, uh, but yeah, 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 no, I, yeah. So oh, that's great that that Evan kind of mentioned me and stuff. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's and, he's incredible. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny because like it kind of like confirmed the impression I had of you. You know, not even having heard your bass playing, <laughs> which, was really, which was really funny. <laughs> well, it's it's funny that because you picked up on the fact that I'm, a, uh, you know, that I'm a music lover, but I I never lost that kind of fanboy mentality, you know, and uh, uh, I'm I'm still a bit of a collector of things. If a band puts a box set out, I want it. You know, I'm a I'm a big fan of the physical item mm -hmm. and the sleeve notes and all that kind of things. So, I mean, I, I know a lot of people, people are, but I meet a hell of a lot of other musicians that aren't really music fans, you know. So yeah. it's, um, or, or, or aren't, haven't got the fanboy excess that I have. And uh, particularly over this lockdown period, I find that I'm possibly more of a music fan than I am a musician. I, you know, because for, for various reasons that I could or, you know, I could possibly go into. Uh, I, I kind of lost my drive a little bit musically um, over these last, over the last year. And uh, and I'm sort of, I'm trying to scramble it and get it back. And I've been doing a, a couple of little things. Um, uh, actually, I'll mean, say that we recorded a Life Signs album in this time. Uh, and I uh, and I've been doing things with um, a band called the Dowling Pool, which is me and uh, uh, and a guy called Willie Dowling. Um, we've been I mean we've been doing that for oh, eleven years now, but um, we put out our third album recently. And now and we've uh, during lockdown we've put out a couple of little uh, songs and videos as well. You know, so um, so I, I gotta say that I, I do this all the time. It's like I, I once said that I'd I'd retired from music. Uh, for six years or something like that. But during that time, I played with a band called the Lotus Eaters and we went to, we went to Japan. They're, a, they're an eighties band and we went to Japan and played there. But I, I seem to have kind of got rid of that bit out of my memory. It's like, no, I didn't do anything for six years, you know, so it's, uh, it's weird. I mean, but my version of not doing something is probably, I don't know, yeah, other people's yeah, version yeah. of doing something, you know, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's something like my my friend Eric says to me, like Marcus, if you do only ten percent of what you're used to, it's still a hundred percent for other people. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, do, do you do you enjoy the process of of, of being more uh, a, a side man to somebody else's project, or do you like to be the leader more, or? How do you find that? I, I don't think I really have a preference, but it's just about no. what you're used to, right? And uh, playing with, with Tony and Pat, um, yeah. for the first few years, it was like I, I wanted to be the support, the one who supports them, right? Yes. And, and, but then it became more of an, of an equal equality between the three of us. And, mm. and so being on tour with Devin, where like sort of like I wasn't that important in a way, which was really new to me and gave me a whole new perspective on like experiencing the show on like, like, uh, uh, you know, watching the audience, like getting, you know, an understanding of the, the dynamic that when I'm actually in a position where I'm in the first line, right, it's difficult yeah. to, to really see that thing. So, so I know I enjoy, um, like, just, just like, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely a music lover. Like I do this because I, I love music and I don't, I would, I mean, this is something that surprises people, but I don't even like playing 
Like it's really strange for people. It's like it's yeah, you know, I, I only play if I need to in order to create those sound worlds, you know. It's like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're not you're not a sit down and practice kind of a, a, a guy sort of thing, yeah. Well, not not music, you know. I would sit down and do like like uh, finger exercises and stuff like that. More uh, like more like a sport, you know. But yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't ever sit down and, and compose on the instrument. Really, it's uh, for me. It's for me the music kind of comes from a different place. And yeah, it's, uh, and it's the joy, kind of what you share with other people and what comes out in in. Well, 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 I guess when different personalities kind of mesh, is that is that the thing that kind of drives you a, a bit more? Do you think? Or... Yeah, yeah, you know, and and even that has been kind of like really started really late in my life. Like when I was like in my late thirties, I started touring a lot. Like before that, oh. I was I was I was basically just a mostly a, a home studio kind of guy. And, and wow. <laughs> amazing yeah. yes yes wow god well look at what you've done in this short space of time I yeah. mean, that's yeah that's great i mean and so i mean i mean i i kind of know well i know tony from uh first thing i i heard uh, other than the gabriel stuff which is great of course you know but uh the one thing that really got me was the king crimson discipline album mm -hmm. and for me that was the first king crimson album i knew you know and uh same for me Oh really? Oh right. Oh, well, it, I I love the kind of groove-based element to it. It seems to share more with something like Talking Heads than uh, Yes or something like yeah. that, you know. And uh, yeah. I mean, I absolutely loved it. And it would have been that I guess the first time I knowingly heard a stick as well, because I I don't think I I realised when I heard Peter Gabriel's albums that that was what was being played. Mm -hmm. It was it was when I heard Discipline. I was like hang about what's going on there you know what's he doing there and uh so i, I mean i love that stuff and i love adrian Ballou as well you know and um uh and pat i actually know from being a david so i'm a big japan david sylvian fan and uh, i think he did did he not play on that album that frit played on the um uh i think it was called third day the first the, the first day yeah but he didn't play on the he didn't play on the record that was jerry marotta um <sighs> Pat, Pat played the tour. Pat played the tour. Yeah, and it was yeah. Trey Dunn as well, I think. Yeah, was it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that was some great stuff. You know, it was, uh, it was really good. But yeah, um, just, just just a few days ago, I spoke with Trey about the uh, Sylvan Fripp years. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that, that will also be out as, as one of these podcasts. That's oh, point. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, I look forward to seeing that. I mean, I, I have been watching a few of these, actually. I mean, the Richard Barbieri one was great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, I mean, I my, my, my kind of attitude towards musicianship isn't one of it needs to be technically good, you know, or, or profi technically proficient, I think is the word. Mm -hmm. um, I, I much prefer uh, it to be creative. I, I, so it can be technically proficient and creative, great, but it can be completely no technique whatsoever. But if, if the ideas are good, then, then, then I'm in. And um, uh, Richard Barbieri always struck me as somebody that um, was really, um, he always, by his own admission, not really a keyboard player as such or a pianist or anything, but he's just got this great like head for textures and sounds and stuff. I, I mean, I mean, you have that as well, you know, because I've heard it with Stickmen, but it's something that I really, I look on in awe more than I do at someone you know, give it all that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, the, the interesting thing is that I, I think people get it totally wrong. I think that playing something simple is much harder than something yeah. difficult yeah. because because difficult is like, and I've become so tired with this, it's like something I know exactly, okay, you have spent, well, this guy spent 15 years practicing mm. this one thing so that he now can impress his peers, right? Like, yeah. no, but I'm not, not interested in that, you know, like yeah. I, I realized there's somebody who has kind of like practiced for, I don't know, doesn't matter for how long, right? And <laughs> place this one note and I actually get goosebumps from that one note. And that's what I'm interested in, right? And, and so it's, it's, it's about the, um, 
so you could say like I don't know like I, I I'm not a poet but but <laughs> there's like like a halo of there's like a halo of some sort of uh, spiritual or um, um, atmospheric charge, let's say, in some sure. people's playing, right? And and that's mm -hmm. what it's that's what it's about. And Richard Barrieri is a, is a great example of that. And I I would say that you know like like being like that, you can also feed that by being technically proficient at what you do. So, but it doesn't have to be a technique that people actually understand. It's yeah. not, you know, people don't understand the amount of time that Richard has probably set in front of his computer, his synthesizers and dialed in sounds, yeah. right? So, mm. but I'm totally, totally with you. And like the whole uh, Sylvian, yeah, yeah. Sylvian thing, which then was like the, the first three or four solo albums, which were so heavy on the uh, atmospherics. So. Just incredible stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I found the same thing with, um, I mean, they, they're an extraordinary great, really, uh, Japan, because they, um, uh, the, the fact that the, the four of them kind of, um, and Rob as well, the fifth, fifth member, but there was the four, the four of them, the core, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of learned how to play together. Uh, and took kind of very little influence from anything that was going on around them. I mean, maybe more so, more so visually, you exactly. know, uh, with the with the makeup and stuff. But the certainly their playing was otherworldly. It was it was like no one else. And Mick Khan was somebody that I was huge fan. I still am a huge fan of. I I, I still own a, a wall fretless, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I'm constantly trying to put this down people's throats, digging it out. So please let me use this thing. <laughs> no, we don't want it. You know, they, they, immediately they're thinking Paul Young, and I'm thinking Mick Khan. You know, so yeah. There yeah. You go. <laughs> You know, I think that Mick Karn is probably one of the of the holy grails of music for me. Like, like the top top three people that kind of like have created something that's in, entirely unique. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. He's just a huge fan of of his his compositions, not just his bass playing. And and they, you know, obviously, composition and bass playing they they go together like this, right? But just this yeah. whole this this whole uh, approach, which seems so um, innocent, but yeah. also sophisticated at the same time, it's it's a, it's a strange paradox, isn't it? Because it it um, again, it doesn't come from a technical place. It comes from a real it's soul, real meaning of the word, you know. And, uh, and even the things he does on keyboards, his, his choice of chords has got his personality written all over it. And I love yeah. that when you get, um, uh, many of the people that played in Cardiacs, I often felt that um, that you could hear their personality, like an extension of what comes out of their fingers into their instrument sort of thing. And uh, and, and you felt you could hear their personality and their playing. And um, and Mick, Mick Khan was definitely one of those. Uh, and I loved his kind of the woodwind and, and Mm -hmm. and the sax and all that kind of stuff he, and he everything he did he did in such an unorthodox manner you know and it was um it's some, something i still uh, and everyone everyone bought the wall fretless and tried to try to play like him as well mm -hmm. uh, and none of them could get the sound and uh, mr wall used to say um, well that's because you haven't got mixed hands you know it's uh, it's what he you know it's the way that he plays you know and it's um yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's something to be said for it. It's, it's amazing stuff. You know, and certainly, certainly it's the ears, you know. I think it's even more so, more the ears than the hands when it comes oh. to, to playing an yeah. instrument. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean I, I really, I've found over the years I've really enjoyed working as a sideman with people. You know, I can write songs. I can take the lead if, if need be. Uh, but but sometimes adding to other people's things and uh, taking on a little bit of their I'm look, I can't think what the word is I'm thinking agenda but that sounds <laughs> sinister in some way but 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 certainly um, you t you take on some of their personality inject something into it that is hopefully completely you you know and and not something I, I mean I, I don't I, I don't like the idea of going and working with someone and doing something that somebody else could do because there's what's the point you know I want to I want to try and 
I, I can I can play someone's notes note for note, but I want to put my stamp on it somehow, you know, and uh, and that's a fun thing, and that's this, and that's the sharing element. It's not an egotistical thing; it's the sharing element of that, you know. So um, some it, uh, and it, and I'm a big fan of serving the song as well, you know. So it's not um, I don't I never do anything for. Um, for, for any kind of ego driven reasons it's always to serve the song or the piece however you want to <laughs> refer to that and to, and to try and hang on to some of the initial intent as well you know because that's I think that's a thing that people sometimes lose if they demo something and then and then do the proper version and then there's, there's always something missing something that got lost so it's kind of trying to it's a yeah. certain amount of serving and it's a certain amount of just i'm gonna bloody well stick my stamp on this you know and you, you see you it's know. very it's a very difficult thing though to because i think as a musician you need to be very very um uh, advanced like for lack of a better word to, mm -hmm. to kind of understand what makes a song or a sound or you know what makes it what it is like because it's something it's not just the, it's just not just the it's not just it's not just the pitches or the rhythms or there's there's like also an attitude or you like yeah. with the when like the um i was in in a band that was covering king crimson for a while the crimson project which was yes. also yes, with, with, with with tony adrian and pat and um and julie slick and tobias ralph and it was sort of that what made it kind of like uh a valid version let's say of that music was that it had that same element of um, danger of falling apart that's how i would how right. i would put it and so when when that danger was there it felt fine it felt okay to play that music yeah. but when there when there was a point where it's, where it was getting too too um polished or you know to rehearse it somehow yeah. lost that and so the for example so it's, it wasn't really about what was being played it was it was about how how sure you were of the parts and like how how much you allow to be unsure of what you were doing which is kind of like right. oh yeah going into the yeah in, in, <laughs> tapping into the subconscious kind yeah. of thing you thinking yeah yeah um yeah, I mean, well, was there a hell of a lot of um, improvisation in, involved in that in that particular band then? Um, not so much, really. It was like mostly the um, the discipline material that we played. And, oh uh, wow! Right, okay. Yeah, and it it was like originally uh, Adrian Ballou had asked Robert Fripp to do like a uh, what was it like thirtieth anniversary tour for discipline. Yeah. And but Robert was um, retired at that point, and then um, Adrian asked Tony to get together with the two trios, and you know Adrian's trio and Stigman, and 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 then we did this sort of like a tribute kind of tour. And, uh, yeah. And there was there wasn't much improvisation actually, but the thing is that even if you're playing fixed parts, like I said, this element of danger, like. You know that yeah. can be that can be improvised. Like you can play the same part over and over again, but it can still be improvised. And this is this is right, something that's right. di diffi difficult to explain to some people. But for me, that's that that's actually a thing. Like right, you know. okay, yeah, no, this <laughs> yeah is, I don't know. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I mean, anything that's thinking outside of the box, I, I'm I'm on board with, man. You know, it's it's uh, um. It's, it's funny, I mean, improvisation is something I wish that I had more of an opportunity to do, you know, I'd be well into doing more, you know, if it ever presented itself. I, uh, the only time I really did it live when nothing was pre-planned was, um, you know, uh, you, well, you, you, I guess you must do Damo Suzuki uh from mm -hmm. can sure, sure. uh you know that he does he goes he used to go around i don't know if he still does this, those, those gigs where he goes around and just, I, <laughs> just I, gets... I, I still get his newsletter so yeah i think oh right yeah. have you done one of these no have, have, have you done no, one no, of these? no 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 i haven't but i still get his newsletter so i see that he's still at least <laughs> at least last year he was still traveling 
he calls he, he calls them sound carriers. Is that have I got that expression right? I think it's he's looking for sound carriers. Yes, yes. Well, I, I got roped into it from a friend of mine. He's a huge Can fan, mm -hmm. and um, and it was it was great because I was in just the right headspace because I'd been I'd been playing in New York, and I flew back. I was living in Brighton at the time, and I flew back. And uh, and so by the time I turned up to the gig, I was completely jet lagged, didn't know where my head was at, you know, and uh, and I'm going to do a, a gig of completely improvised stuff for the first time ever. And I thought I was about 36 at the time, I think. And anyway, um, mm -hmm. and the, the only direction we were given, he said, I, I, I will jump up in the air and when I hit the floor, make a noise and then just go into whatever you want. <laughs> that was the only direction we got. <laughs> and, uh, and it was amazing. It was really good. It was so liber liberating and, um, and it was fun. And the weirdest thing about it was I looked out um, and <laughs> there were loads of girls dancing, <laughs> dancing girls, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm used to most of the gigs I do, it's pretty, pretty winkle heavy, you know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of men out there, you know. And, uh, uh, it was like wow, there are people dancing, and, and a lot of them are girls, you know. But uh, but it, it was it it was interesting to see that um, you would you would think is this just going to be a fun thing for us to do, or or is there anything in it for the audience? But it's amazing the the kind of primal element of how audience become part of it, you know. And uh, this is a very spinal type, actually. Uh, they kind of become one with the guys in the band, you know. And uh, but they know it really. It really was. It was. Um, uh, it was. <laughs> it was like a two way thing. And, uh, and I was thinking, oh God, I'd like to do more of this at some point. But it's never really presented itself. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something for the future, I think. Yeah, John, you have to you have to look for it. I think it's not something that will present itself, you know, right. I, uh, right. I, I think especially if because we sort of like develop a reputation. And, and I mean, you, well, having been the cardiacs, like where, where the music is so um, intricately written right yeah it's it's sort of like maybe then people think okay no I, d I don't think john would want to improvise i don't know but you know that kind of that kind of thing is something that that people do because people usually kind of try to put you know other people in a in a pigeonhole you know like and yeah you know. that's 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 a really good point because i i hear what you're saying is it, people will probably employ me because they they think he, he's the bloke that plays loads of notes and can learn them yeah. uh, efficiently. And um, as, as opposed to, yeah, no, you're right. I need to go out and look for him. Yeah. Good, yeah. Point. Good point. See, I told you, this is, this is, a, this is a counseling session. We're helping each other out here. You know, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for your help already. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, Marcus. Thank you. <laughs> Can I move in? When? <laughs> um. So, John, tell me, tell me a little bit uh, about how things, you know, started for you in music. Like you said, as a, a fan, like what, what, what was like the, what was the first earliest memory let's say of you listening to music well i i have a couple of these and, and the, the the interesting thing is both of them involve fear uh, uh the first one the first thing i remember is my sister uh, she had a copy of well one of my sisters kath she had she had a copy of the yes album for uh, which is i guess the second yes album uh, and I don't know if you know the cover, but it's got that kind of really scary sort of like dimly lit green, looks like a Polaroid. And, and it's got uh, a picture of them. And one of them's got their foot in a cast. Uh, but for whatever reason, there's a picture of a, of a dummy's head. Uh, not a picture of a dummy's head. There is a dummy's head in front of them, but kind of levitated. And it, and it was the most terrifying thing I, I could imagine and on the back you just see this levitated head hanging above a chair and I thought this was hilarious so therefore when I heard what was on the album I associated it with that so not uh, not hilarious uh, terrifying and, and so I associate, associated it with being something really scary 
And then after that, I saw Sparks, the band Sparks on top of the pops doing this town, town ain't big enough for the both of us. And of course, they've got this cable player, Ron, that looks like, like that all starey eyes and stuff. And again, terrifying, a bloke that looked like Hitler playing keyboards and uh, uh, don't mention the war, you know, but, but it was, um, but it was, uh, yeah, t absolutely, absolutely terrifying. And um, uh, 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 um, uh, pretty much all my family played instruments, including my mum and dad. And, uh, and so it, it was going on in the house, but my, the first stuff I actually was listening to and was a fan of was um, uh, bands like Sheik and Earth, Wind and Fire, uh, the Jacksons, what they were doing in the late 70s, so, uh, Brothers Johnson as well, a lot of kind of uh, black funk or I guess, I guess you could call it jazz funk, almost disco tinged to a certain extent, you know, so I, I, liked, I liked all that stuff really. And then, it, and then the, the, because of the post-punk thing, when I um, came along, and it was uh, the police, I guess, was uh, was the most palatable thing for a nine-year-old boy to listen to that wasn't too shouty and sweary. So, so I, so I, I liked that, and and that, and it was, I think, it was Noel Rogers and Andy Summers that made me want to play guitar. So I, I started when I was eleven, and I was very much a sit there and try and work out how to play their lines. I, some people don't like doing that, but I, I was one of those that, that, that did. Um, but I, I, th I would say that the, the biggest turning point for me was when I was 15 years old and uh, my then brother-in-law played me, um, uh, showed me a Frank Zappa video. Mm -hmm. And it was, the, it was the Halloween gig from 1981 and it was kind of Steve Vai, Tommy Mars, uh, Chad Wackham and that 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 lot and uh, that absolutely changed everything because I was like, how are they playing this? What appears to be random notes in mm -hmm. unison? There's only one way this could be happening, and it's because they've learned how to do it. But it wasn't just that it was technically proficient; it was that there was a kind of soul to it and a real mm -hmm. kind of melancholy thing to his chords. I mean, it's there's a lot of Lydian stuff, I guess, in in what he does, but there was something in it, some kind of content. And the people that don't like him tend, uh, tend to not like the, what they see as kind of, I guess, sexist, sometimes homophobic or racist lyrics, which, I mean, anyone that knows what he's about knows that's not what he's about, you know. Um, but he, uh, I, I, it, it was funny, yeah, I picked up on what was funny about it, but it was more the feeling that this stuff gave me, and that, that kind of changed everything for me. So um, I'd already started playing guitar, I'd started playing drums, a, a guitar when I was 11, drums when I was 13, bass when I was 15, and then keyboards sort of came after that, really. But it was a necessity because I wanted to be a recording artist, and I never wanted to play in a band. I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to go on tour because I thought my gear might get nicked. <laughs> so I was so scared of the world, you know. Mm. So I figured I would I would be this bloke that just recorded stuff on his own, you know. But of course that changed when I discovered Cardiacs as a fan in the late eighties, and uh, that was the biggest turning point, I guess, because that shaped what I became, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, sorry, this is so drawn out and long and no 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 it's i find it i find it super interesting and and uh like you said something at the very beginning where you were kind of like pointing out the the cover of the s yes album and mm. uh and it's sort of like it felt to me like maybe that initial um initial impression was also maybe more more than just just the music it was also about the um uh, theatrical aspects probably which sort of yeah. and and then sort of like this uh frank zappa kind of like fits into that as well where it's yeah. it's, it's 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 like it's more than just the, the music it's more than just, than just the words it's it's like uh, uh the german word gesamtkunstwerk <laughs> oh wow that's <laughs> which, a lovely which, spelling word. which which means it's like a it's like a it's a complete or an all-encompassing piece of art, and um, wow. 
and and that's this is there kind an English of, equivalent to that word? Yeah, I, I would I would have to look it up. But you know, like German is this this language where you have these words that have like a really profound meaning that you you know have to use a whole paragraph of English for to explain. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, because it's that there are some great sounding words in the German language. I mean, Frank Zappa said that he loved singing in German and that it was a great rock and roll ex, uh, uh, language, you know. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but he didn't like singing in French. He said it sounded like sucking up snot through a straw. Slightly <laughs> 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 offensive, but there you go. <laughs> Yeah. You know, sometimes I, and I'm, I don't know Frank's music very well. So, oh, yeah. which, which also means that I have sort of like a very um, open view on it. Like I have, I have no um, prejudice at all. So, right, I right. Something. Right. And so what I, what I find if like, if somebody would ask me to analyze him, right? <laughs> like, mm. uh, his psychology a little bit. I think that a lot of what he did, which was like sort of like using this, uh, um, I don't have the words for this, but this particular style of humor, let's say, which was mm. sort of like uh, a little bit over the top sometimes maybe, is sort yeah. of like just um, uh, an expression of, I would say of some sort of frustration and not, you know, frustration with with him not being able to do the art, the the you know the art music that he really wanted to do. That's somehow, interesting. Yeah, know, as if he was kind of like a little bit embarrassed about what he was trying to do, and then he had to combine it with something that sort of like um, um, made it lighter in a way, right? Less heavy. Uh, yeah, that I think I think you're possibly very perceptive there because I know that he, uh, foremost, he he wanted to be um, a classical composer. That's what he really wanted to do in the kind of Stravinsky, Edgar, what's his name, Edgar Vares, Vares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, in in that kind of vein, and. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe there was a certain amount of kind of self-conscious kind of like. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, I, I'm I, look, I'm I'm I've always been a real self-deprecating kind of a person. I'm not an ego-driven. Oh, aren't I brilliant or any of this stuff. I tend to take the piss out, mick, mick out of myself, and mm -hmm. uh, and sort of um, put myself down, you know, because it's easy. I was a very British thing that I guess, but. Uh, but it, it's a very it's a very simple thing uh, or a very easy thing to do and uh, and to make light of things instead of allowing yourself to just lay yourself bare and do what you're really about you know and I I kind of envy people that can do that you know um, certainly like the David Sylvians of the world and you know and, and you know people like that but um, uh, yeah it's. Uh, you know, I think I think there's there's a way though to be somewhere in between, right? You you can mm. you can um, you don't have to believe you're the greatest in order right. to in order to have a loving relationship with yourself. Let's say, right? right. So, so so like like I think it's it is shocking to me. Let's say if an artist, any artist, does not like. Uh, his or her own work like yeah. i find that i find that shocking because then then what's the point of, you know like you're wasting your time right that's mm. what i'm thinking because like you doing these things for yourself mm. anyway in the first place right like there is yeah. you know there's n nobody's asking you nobody's asking you to play bass maybe nowadays some people do right but yeah, initially yeah. you know it's and 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 so i find i find it very very important that there is some sort of um that one has an ongoing relationship with your own work like that's why right. I, I i like to listen to old stuff that i did to sort of like rediscover it so to learn something about myself and also yeah. you know, i think yeah. i think you don't and and i'm I'm not full of myself about what I did, but I still uh, make an effort to enjoy it. And yeah, that's, that's 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 great. I mean, and I think that's healthy as well. I mean, my 
I think my stance on this is always that when I'm doing it, it's the best thing in the world. Um, nothing else comes close to it. I'm not even thinking about anything else because this is the greatest thing that's going on, you know. Um, then I put it out and my, my first thought is this is no longer mine, it's theirs, the people that buy it, you know. So, so that I've, I've handed it over, I've given it to them. Uh, and then at some point I start thinking, oh, I, I'll, someone will play me it or I'll hear a bit of it. I'll go, oh God, I wish I'd done this. Or I, oh, that's not quite as good as I thought it was. And so that would be what drives me to do the next thing uh, of wanting to better myself, wanting, wanting to, to do something better than I did before. But uh, what you just said there about going back all of a sudden and listening to something really old, there's something quite nice about doing that. Um, I, I have to have had a few drinks to do that, I think. Um, but usually, uh, but but it, but it's it's a lovely thing because because that kind of takes you out of your own head and you almost start hearing it from an outsider's uh, perspective. And to, uh, and also, it's lovely to play stuff when you can't remember what what you did or or what yeah. how it goes or what the chords are or mm. any of that stuff. So that's I mean that's always fun uh, and it's. Um, boring you know it's a lovely thing when it's reassuring because it's like okay well i'm obviously doing all right i'm doing something right this is working you know um uh but the um yeah it's the initial thing it's the it's the thing when i first done it and i put it out there and then i start panicking that it's not it's not quite as good as it could be so uh but but that's but that makes me make the next the next thing you know so yeah, um yeah it's, uh, I, yeah it's I, I totally hear you. It's just that like my attitude has changed a little bit over the years because I one kind of like metaphor, let's say for creation is like I, I now liken it to having a child. Like you putting oh, out putting out an album is like having a child, right? So even though if like 20 years later you realize your child is a drug addict, right? you you still love your child and you maybe even you, you you probably hurt because your child is a drug addict right so there is there is like this this relationship that i think we should never really push away i i think it's because that would be right. like you're like you're, you're 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 cutting off a piece of yourself and 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 you know you will always love your children you know no matter how uh, bad they look or how good they look right like and uh... <laughs> well i think that's a good point really you know it, it's um yeah uh, yeah my, uh, and it's i mean you said it from the beginning it is learning to kind of maintain a relationship with yourself you know and that that could come across as, as being I don't know up yourself or whatever, but it it's kind of not because in order to function to do stuff and to deliver it to people, you have to kind of have to learn to love yourself a little bit. Otherwise, uh, no, this is this is really helping actually. Thank you for this. It's very good because I'm struggling at the moment. I haven't um, I haven't uh, yeah I've 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 struggled to to work recently or or to or to come up with things. Mm -hmm. um so yeah no it's good it's good to to get these i i i hear you i hear you like maybe the first six months of the, uh, the COVID situation it was sort of like in a way energizing and like like right. having you know being forced to sort of like re you know to reinvent myself was was, mm. was kind of a good thing for a moment <laughs> and yeah 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 and so now what I've what I've started to learn is that even though I don't really feel motiv motivated to just play or make music um, uh, without a reason, but yeah. I realize like when I actually, when I'm forced or even if yeah. I'm forcing myself to do something, like yeah. what, I, what I do is great. Well, great as in as good as it's ever been like, like, like well, and, and yeah and, and and you know and somehow this realization that sort of like what we do as musicians is really uh really much less dependent on our dependent on how we feel than we think yeah well that's uh, i mean yeah and and it, and it should be as well you know i mean 
I found okay. Look, I'm, I'm going to level with you. What what happened? Because <laughs> lockdown didn't start too great for me. Um, I um, I was on tour uh, with Life Science. We were doing we were doing a, a handful of gigs, and I was about to do the cruise, which I think we were you about to do it as yeah, well. Yeah. The, yes. The, yes. Yes. Yeah, and and Carvis was as well. So it was going to be a, another jolly, you know, mates together and that, and. Um, while I was on tour, my wife became ill, and uh, mm. she uh, she basically got it. She got the COVID thing, mm. uh, but she got the worst version of it. She was like, um, uh, because she has an autoimmune disorder and uh, mm. and and she's diabetic, so it went straight to um, uh, yeah, straight to the lungs. And she was critical, you know, she, it was really bad and, and it was worrying, it was the touch and go. So it was the biggest scare. And, and also at that point, nobody really knew what the survival rate was or how, how bad it was going to be, but, but she'd got pneumonia, you know, and, uh, and it, was, it was absolutely terrifying. And we, I, and we had to make the decision not to take her to hospital because if, if we took her to hospital and she hasn't got it and this is something else, then... She might catch it, you know, so it was such a weird thing. And at the same time, my 11 year old son started having uh, epileptic seizures. So it was just, <laughs> it was just like, okay, here you go. All your work has stopped and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna hit you with these two things, you know. And, um, and I guess, you know, I mean, understandably, I, I guess I went a little bit nuts, you know, a little bit mad. And I, um, and so, uh, at the time, Life Science were just beginning a new album, which we were doing in lockdown. Uh, Willie Dowling out of the Dowling Pool, the, band, the other band I playing, had set me up with Logic very kindly. So, um, uh, so we were going to do some stuff anyway. Um, uh, but at this point, I just couldn't do any of it. My head was somewhere else. So I was late starting on the Life Science thing. They had to start the album without me. Um, uh, I was unable to write uh, and, and do stuff for the Dowling Bowl, so so they were forced, or, or, or Willie was forced to kind of try and you know make up for that by working on the stuff himself for a bit, mm -hmm. and um, and it was it, it just got off to a really really bad start, and uh, it was but but it was one that my my wife came out of it by the way she's uh, she's great she, she it all worked out uh, mm. my son is now on uh, medicine for his epilepsy so he's still having seizures but they're not quite as full on but mm. it's um uh, and there are other things going on behind the scenes that I probably shouldn't talk about uh, but but it's um but but it's uh, it's been a constant struggle and not one which is uh, kind of conducive to being creative, you know, and work, working on things. So, because I, I suddenly realised I, how much I rely on my contact with other people, mm -hmm. uh, ver verbal and otherwise, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I found that not being around anyone anymore, I um, mean, I felt I had nothing to, to write about or to play about, if you know what I mean. And it's amazing how much just, I guess, just the touch of a hand or something like that uh, between two people. Well, you'll get some surge of energy from that yeah. that will uh, possibly trigger off an idea. You don't know. You don't know how these things work. Carver says, I watched this thing the other day, said it was magic. Well, <laughs> it's, it's as good an explanation as any, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I, um, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I, I found it really, really tough to uh, to get back into it again so this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to get back into it but I, i'm i'm in the middle of moving house which is why the place is a tip at the moment but um uh yeah so we've got to do that first but but in a way that'll be a great thing a complete change of scene and then to get back into it and start from uh, uh well sort of from scratch again and uh, so, so yeah, I've told you my woes now. You know, I've shared them all. You know. No, I, I think there is uh, also this uh, other aspect to it that in a situation where uh, it's about your family, right, and about yeah. your health, and and um, like music really 
um, finally, let's say, become secondary, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, which, which kind of like you could say, it's 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 sort of like, I don't know what I don't want to say, but it's it's a good thing that that can happen, right? Yeah. Because because that's that's one of like the obsessions. Well, the obsession with music usually puts the puts the music absolutely in the number one place and and to experience that there's something else i mean you you because you you you've been a father for at least 11 years so that's i, yeah. I heard that so but but i've only just had a daughter like uh, one and a half years ago so it's yeah, uh, 14 months I, I think i heard yes yeah. so, it's, so it's it's for me it's much it's a much newer experience to kind of like realize okay there's something else there's not just music in the world there's there yeah. is some sort of like responsibility where like as long as I was alone, even though I was in a partnership, you know, I was I was always I was just alone on my own, and I didn't have to have insurance and blah blah blah, right? Like mm -hmm. because if I get run over, I get run over, and like okay, ciao. But um, <laughs> once you you know, but once you have once you have a family, right? It's it changes, and and so then this this uh, realization of. Um, of, of re, uh, in you know like realization as in like the reality of noticing okay here's something else that's more important than music um yeah. is is sort of something that has been um um i think cathartic for me but right. at the same time also like the most scary thing because like all my life was defined by music and, yeah and, yeah well say yeah yeah, and so I can I can totally see what you're saying because like for me it's it's uh, and this may be different for you but just the fact that when you realize okay I don't really I don't really have to be active and nothing much changes about yes a change be like there's change about how I feel but how much does it really matter to other people right this is sort of like yeah. also a question like how much does what we does what we do really matter um in the grand scheme of things and it's not that it's not that it's something that i i think about a lot but i've just realized that it does actually play a role uh, uh, you know like if i um or, or do what do you think is it is there uh any of that in your um like do you are you losing self-worth when you're not when you're not making music no, uh, and, and that's the, I think that's the surprising thing about it, because having, to, having kind of devoted my life to this since I was, I guess, nine years old, uh, um, I, uh, I, I, was, I thought I'd miss it a lot more, you know, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. I found that I really started to kind of value my relationships uh, within my family, you know, I mean, I, I do, I mean, we, it's great here, you know, I mean, I get on I, I still talk to my wife, you know, we, we, you know, we, we sit and we listen to music and we'll have a glass of wine and we'll talk about everything. And, uh, and we have immense good fun with our child. He, he's, um, he's autistic, um, uh, high functioning, you know, I mean, it's strange when you tell someone that your kid's autistic because they imagine some kid that can't give you eye contact, wouldn't want to cuddle you. And he's, he's none of that. He's kind of very, you know, hands on and loves music and mm -hmm. uh, and has perfect pitch, which is another story. You know, that's a weird one, but um, that I don't have. Um, but he, uh, but yeah, the the whole thing, I, it it was kind of reevaluation of the stuff that was at your doorstep. You know, the of the family, and so and and, and I guess no music fan is going to be watching this, enjoying me talking about that. But but it it was everything. You know, and, and this is me talking to you about it, so it doesn't matter. But uh, but yeah, it, it really um, yeah, that was that was a that was a positive thing. Uh, the, the the negative thing on my work was that I suddenly didn't feel anything for it. I didn't. I felt that I wasn't having enough life experience in order to um, mm -hmm. to write. Whereas mm -hmm. other people have immersed immersed themselves in work. I think Carvis, from what I picked up from the other day when I watched the podcast, I thought. Uh, I thought, oh well, that's great. He's he's managing to work through this, which is which is really really good. And I think that I think many people are, you know. Um, uh, but like I say, I say that I didn't do anything, but I played on the Life Science album, and 
and I and I've done a couple of tracks for the Dowling Pool, you know, and um, um, oh, I worked on another album as well with uh, <laughs> yeah, here's me retired again. I worked, I worked on another thing with um, a guy called a guitarist called Dave Bainbridge, who is the current um, he he plays with Live Science now. He was in the band called Iona, and he's uh, he's in the middle of doing a. A solo album so I, I worked on that and I, I managed I managed to get my uh, wall fretless on it so, uh, so <laughs> keeping the car alive you know it's uh, it good you know but yeah yeah so I, I, I did a bit of that as well so um, oh and there's another band I play in as well called <laughs> I'm doing it again Panic Sphere um, who, uh, who uh, it's the guitarist it's my predecessor in Cardiacs and it's a band I used to do with him in the 90s. He used to do it in the 80s. And we've been doing some stuff recently and, and we've recorded a few bits as well, you know, uh, for a, for an album. So, um, so yeah, I've been kind of working on other people's stuff. I think the thing that I'm saying though is that uh, my ability to write uh, and uh, particularly words, but also music, um, I'm not feeling it. And I'd like to, I'd like to get that mojo back again. And, start doing stuff again but uh that's i think that's my that's my lockdown failure you know it's that's where i am with that at the moment but you know i, yeah. I would say i would say it's similar to me that i really don't feel like writing uh however i'm, I'm thinking about going into a studio and just forcing myself to write right just, okay just great. just kind of just well it's just an idea i don't know if i will do it but maybe maybe in the summer just the mm -hmm. idea to be alone, like with just with an engineer in like for two weeks in the studio and just like just composing as I record, you know, like that's, that's yeah. sort of like my idea uh, to what see if. The, what are the current, sorry, I was just going to ask, what are the current lockdown restrictions there in order for you to kind of work with other people? How does that work? Uh, <laughs> don't ask me, they change every day. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but no, it is it is possible to get together in a professional context, you are allowed to get together. And then you like, you know, if you're in a in a big enough studio, there's no problem if you're there with a few people. And um, um, like we, you know, I had, a, um, I organized a, an improv session which are like two days in the studio just a couple of weeks ago, which was really wonderful to do. Like, um, oh, wow. and That's yeah, cool. so it is, it's possible. Like, like in the professional context, like meeting, meeting, um, like the rule here was that you were only allowed to meet one person from another household yeah. like at, a, at a time. And um, yeah, but no, this, it is, it is possible to, uh, to work in the mm. studio if you know if i wanted to it would be possible and it would also uh le would also be legal so. yeah. <laughs> yeah actually yeah I'm, I'm blowing your cover aren't i by talking about it on <laughs> no 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 it's uh you, you know i think like we're we have to accept that we are responsible each yeah. one of us is responsible right yes. so like like here they, there can be like as many rules um you know like as you want, but it's still yeah. about your own responsibility and you, you're sort of like required to act responsibly. And the responsibility does not only come with the idea that you need to save other people's lives. It's also your own life. Actually, the first thing to do is like put, put the mask on, you know, the, the mm. oxygen mask on yourself first because before you help others, right? Like that I think that yeah. it's, they say on the planes, right? And that's that's kind of like what what life is like and and that's why each one of us has to be kind of like really responsible to um to not not um destroy your own life energy let's say yeah because i i think now i'm at the point where i'm i mean to some extent i'm possibly putting up obstacles in front of myself as opposed to them being uh, coming from an outside force, so uh, so yeah, I, these these are obstacles that I'm creating rather than. But uh, I mean, um, you're also you're also like extremely traumatized, like having yeah. you know, gone through what your wife went through, right? And it's mm. um, seriously that's 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 something else. But like mm. like just the point I was trying to make is that like each one of us is kind of like you're responsible for yourself, and and you have to be like make the good decisions 
And the good decision, obviously, is not to get together in big groups and stuff like that. So that's that's all obvious. But yeah. like what what the what the how you put the rules or how you Im interpret the rules, let's say, for yourself yeah. is something that has to be in in tune with you being mentally healthy, right? If yeah. you right. For sure, absolutely, yeah. I mean, again, yeah. It, it, I guess it, it harps back to what we were talking about earlier when, uh, where, it harks back, uh, when where you were, um, you know, saying you know, about the relationship you have with yourself. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. I think I think that that as people who create sound, like like in, and let me say this. I mean, like sound like well, let me just really be like super um um uh, spiritual here for a moment right yeah i i really i would say that the these these materials that the whole world is kind of like made out of is something like sound it's it's mm. like some people call it vibration or rhythms or whatever you could say but these are like this is this is kind of like uh, like everything is kind of like moving and shaking and it's it's like it's it's it, everything's dancing right and and yeah, it's yeah. This, and and um as people who actually manipulate that this uh dance consciously like that's what we do as musicians um we also give m you know like material to other beings other beings who don't create music but other beings yeah. who, who build houses or whatever or who are bookkeepers or whatever right like this i think i think that 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 music or the arts in general sort of like providing the material that makes that makes the work uh, life worth living you could also put it and 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 that's why um i i don't want to say i want to encourage you to write anyway right like even if you if you feel like you can't um, mm. But maybe there, and that's why why I said that I was gonna, I was I'm thinking of forcing myself to actually like put myself in this in a situation where I just have to do something because I just don't want to waste the money right <laughs> that I'm paying for the <laughs> studio right? and, and 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 so I don't I don't know like something like I mean, like I mean that's what kind of why I was saying I, I think these conversations are quite helpful really because I mean you you've already given. An example, you, you haven't kind of, kind of gone, you should do this, but you've said, what I'm going to do is this. And mm. so uh, immediately that's going to plant a seed uh, within me to, to think, okay, well, you know, maybe I should look at doing something like that too. I think it's um, it's healthy. It's, it's, it's good to talk, you know. Yeah, it's certainly good to talk, yeah. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> 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 to coin a phrase. <laughs> Phil Collins or something. <laughs> hey, so uh, tell me, you know, tell me a little bit about cardiacs. Like, like what what do people not know about cardiacs? Uh, oh God, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, well, it's funny, you know. I um, we we had we always had a a kind of this reputation for being. A, a, you know, a bit left of centre, a bit strange as, as people. And I was forever telling people, actually, the, the reality of it is we're a bunch of normal blokes that go into a room <laughs> and practice a bit of music and do it. But it's it's only recently that I've kind of, more recently, I've looked back on the way we were and the way that we used to behave. And, uh, and also certainly joining other bands and realising, oh, God, these people aren't like... Yeah, Tim Smith or Jim Smith or, or Carvis Tarabi or people like that. And um, uh, I suddenly realised we probably are as strange as, as we as perceived. Um, but, but not in an unhinged, we can't get anything done way. I mean, we, we, we used to do business. We used to get on and do it, you know, but... Um, uh, but there was definitely, uh, I mean, it was a lot of fun, you know, we were all very, very close and we, and we, and we had, we had, we had immense fun together and, um, um, yeah, and, and, and the, the, there was this other thing as well of, uh, Tim Smith, the, the main guy, uh, 
he he was uh, he, he was a mentor to me. I was 21 years old when I joined, you know, and he was my hero. You know, so I joined mm -hmm. I joined my favourite band, and um, I learned a lot from him, not just musically, but as a person. And um, you know, he had uh, he had a love, uh, you know, a really nice way of viewing the world. You know, because I mean, for anyone that doesn't know, he he died last year. Um, uh, uh, he had um, in, well, God, when was it? 2008, he had a cardiac arrest, ironically. And um, uh, and it left him in a wheelchair, you know, unable to verbally communicate, but he could communicate. He would point to letters on a cushion in order to communicate. Mm -hmm. but, so yeah. he was still there, but unable to use the physical elements in order to, in, with which to kind of create, uh, to, you know, kind of speak to people and, uh, but anyway, he, um, uh, but but the way that he was, you know, when we were first doing stuff, he just had a lovely outlook on life. And, you know, for instance, really simple little things, like I would be worried about something and stewing over something and go, and spinning out. And he would, and it would, it would just stop me. I'd go, John, John, but check this out. And he'd get this atlas out and just open it up like that. And, he, and it would show the whole world like that you go watch this get his finger and go like that and just stick it on, onto one tiny little part of his map portugal possibly and uh, <laughs> and would say uh, would say see how tiny and insignificant a little that is in in relation to the rest of the world that's what your problem is it's nothing it doesn't really matter you'll be all right you know uh, but it, it wouldn't be done in a don't moan kind of way it would be in the you'll be all right don't worry about it sort of thing sort of thing and it was um it was a lovely kind of he had a very positive viewpoint on life you know you know and and he would always remember to enjoy himself you know to take it in you know which many of us don't many of us don't live in the moment and, and do that i mean bick uh the my predecessor that i told you about before he um he said that they, because he, he was in the band called Levitation and, and Tim was doing the sound, Tim Smith was doing, doing the sound. So they all went over to America and Tim had always wanted to go to America. And the minute they got there, they, they, they all wanted to go to their hotels and sleep. They said, what, what are you talking about? He said, let's go to the Empire State Building. Let's go right up to the top, like that. They're like, oh God, oh, okay then. So they all, they all go up there and they're all stood on the top. And he said, right, everybody, close your eyes. Just imagine that you're in your front room watching the television. Right, you got that? Now open your eyes. Everyone opened their eyes. They were like, whoa! <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's he because he was experiencing it, and he wanted everyone to experience it, you know. And he was he was so giving, and he would, you know, when he talked to you, he would make you feel like the only person in the room, you know. So he would. Uh, it would be all eyes on you like that, you know, sort of thing. And, uh, uh, and, and just, I don't know, just make you feel brilliant about yourself and, um, and, and um, stop you worrying about things, you know, silly little things, you know, and uh, uh, yeah, I really, really miss him. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a terrible loss that, you know, and, a, and one that has affected many people, you know, a lot of people have, have been badly affected by uh, by that, you know. But uh, but what what a lovely man, and uh, and and it's an honour to kind of celebrate his life at any moment that presents itself, you know. So yeah, it, um, I got nothing but goodness and love out of that band. Really loved it. Sounds like Tim was uh, was some sort of healer. Yeah. An angel. An know? angel, an angel, yeah. yeah. It was that. I mean, it's funny when I joined the band, he, he he said it's like you've always been in the band. He said it's like you fell out of the sky. But it's like, no, that was you. It was you that fell out of the sky for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And and the funny thing is, is that everyone that was ever involved in the band came from some kind of jarred family in the first place there was always something weird with the families that everyone was in this band came from whether it was a large family or a small family or a dysfunctional family it was always weird and, and i think we all found our own family within within 
cardiacs and uh and it's one that that just spread out into so many other bands and and projects you know which is uh that's a that's a beautiful thing you know that's that's good that's good and um and and it and it goes on to this day you know and and the the love people have for it now is i mean i always knew it would it would get bigger later on and it is it's already crossing out now into well, no one in America used to know us, uh, but now quite a few people do, and it's spreading out, which is great. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I, I'd have loved uh, for Tim to hang around and see how that went. <laughs> oh. Yeah, pause for thought. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, all good. So, like, well, let me just ask something like a little more technical. So, how how did you guys um, rehearse? How did you how did you write? Was there did you meet like once every week, or what kind of like was what was the rhythm? Like, how did you guys work? Well, we, that was one thing we didn't do was meet regularly. What we would do, <laughs> I mean, initially when I joined the band, it was it it all changed because it used to be live musicians. It used to be like a six piece, and um, then all of a sudden the keyboard player had left, the percussionist had left, the sax player had left, and uh, and all of a sudden there was four of us, uh, so two guitars, bass, and drums. But there's all this stuff, you know, keyboards and, and, and percussion and things. That, so we started to use uh, the, well, tapes it was back then, you know, reel to reel, Fustex, eight track, I think it was at the time, was it possibly 16? Can't remember. Um, but yeah, so we, so we would get, so initially we had to get used to that. So we had a fair bit of rehearsing then. But from then on, once we'd started gigging, it was like, okay, we've got, um, <laughs> we've got some gigs coming up. Let's get together and do two rehearsals. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's that's how we always work. We never rehearse very much. It's like, mm -hmm. It wasn't something we did much of. It's like, once you learn that stuff, it's it's in there, you know, and uh, uh, you never really forget it. Like, I mean, I, Sometimes I test myself if I'm sat on, I wouldn't do it in front of anyone, but I sat on my own sometimes, pick up a guitar and I think, uh, we had this song called The Duck and Roger the Horse, which is a uh, ridiculous, uh, very complicated bit of music. And, uh, and I'd, I'd sit there and play it and it's all, it's all still there. It, it never went, it never left. Yeah. So, you know, the day you get the call to go out and do it, the day they show him the alphabet sign in the sky, you know, yeah, on the you know, and, and you know, playing again, yeah. you know. Yeah, there you go. You see, it's a it's a very special relationship with that music itself that is at the yeah. core of it. It's there's it's there's more to it than than learning a part or like certainly much more than reading a part for sure. But it's not yeah. on. It's not just learn. It's also it's almost as if it's just part of who you are it's it's kind of like one with your love for the world and and it's yeah. well it, it's really weird because we never talked about it we would just do it you know so i mean mm -hmm. I, I i started writing for them i wrote we did an album called sing to god and i think i wrote about five songs on it or something um uh but it was great when i, I mean when i was in the band um uh, it was all kind of the way we were doing things was different to what it had been before. And, uh, and me and Tim really collaborated on it, you know, um, uh, both having hands hands and arrangements, you know, and uh, I uh, was contributing stuff as well, you know, and uh, and he was, I found him very, he seemed, for a bloke that had been in charge, you know, he was very kind of willing to kind of work with somebody else, you know, and... Um, uh, we, uh, yeah, we had a, it was, it was really good fun actually. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was, a, it was, a, it was a healthy, healthy, healthy working relationship, you know, it was all right. Uh, and we both contributed to each other's music as well. We both came up with ideas that kind of shame, changed the shape of what, you know, of what, mm -hmm. of what, what the initial idea was, you know, so 
it was, uh, yeah, that was a fun time. You know, that was mid nineties, like 95 sort of time. Um, and it was, yeah, it was great. And also we had a great, you know, we had a great bunch of friends as well. So we were rehearsing our recording at Jim's, uh, Jim Smith is Tim's brother, played the bass. So, Um, they'd invite all their mates over and they'd all kind of camp in, in the, bring their tents and camp in the, in the garden and uh, yeah they were pretty pretty fun parties though Carvis was there for those because he was he was the guitar tech at that point you know before he he was in the band but um the, the minute he turned up it was just like yeah he needed to be around and I've uh, got me and me and Carlos are a nightmare, really, because um, for anyone else, because we're so childish, we bring out the child in each other. And um, uh, he's, yeah, I mean, he's loads of fun. Uh, Tim once said, I'm uh, yeah, and it was great. Um, podcast, uh, the podcast you did with Carvers, it was uh, really um, that kind of cosmic stuff he comes out with. It, I imagine that people that don't know him think that that's kind of affected or fake or or whatever. But it's not. That is him. That is, that is he is he is giving you everything that's on his mind at that moment and when i when i'm around him it's it's god it's, it's he he brings the late 60s love in everywhere he goes you know? <laughs> he's so uh, so much so much fun you know and uh, uh i th i think i'm trying to think what it was he said to me when we start with that that cruise that we did he said something hilarious to me right at the beginning of, the, of this something like uh, we're going to have a party that they're going to be able to see from outer space or something like that. It was something, something really daft, you know. And, and, and the thing is, you'll be in the middle of having these intense conversations with him laughing your head off, and then he'll just tell you he loves you, grab you and kiss you. And it's the most natural thing in the world, you know. It's not, it's not, it's not odd. <laughs> it's, like, it's lovely, you know. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's the real deal, you know. Um, and, and he's also hilariously funny. He's a very funny person, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So he yeah. was a great person to have round before he was in the band. But I knew, and I said to him, you know, the day that I leave, you've you've got to join. You know, you've got to be in this band. You know. So, and you you did eventually leave. Yeah, I had to because um, they weren't do they they weren't active enough at the time. They weren't doing much. And I'd started playing with a band called the Wild Hearts that I, I mentioned before that Devin used to play in. And we got really, really busy and I, I just couldn't do both things. So, so I had to, I had to leave. I didn't want to, you know, and we, we remained very close friends, you know, I mean, to right up to the end, you know, and um, uh, yeah, so, so I mean, Tim, I would, I would see, you know, we would go out together and stuff, and uh, uh, so it was, it was, it wasn't like a, it was a completely amicable party, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't weird in any way, um, uh, and, but it was great, it was great to see Carvis come in and bring what he brought to it, and and to see what he's gone on to do since is, it's lovely, you know, very, very kind of, I don't know, it sounds patronising to say proud of him, but. But I am because uh, the first time I saw him, he was 19 year, years old. He had dreadlocks. I was on stage and he was in the audience watching me. You know, and I was, and, uh, but I remember him at the first gig I ever did. He, he talked to me from the, from the audience. And that was the first time I met him. But what a, what a lovely, lovely man. You know. Yes. Yeah, so. and, and you know, like the way that I experienced him, Harvest, when I first met him, was kind of like really the exact same, not the exact same, but you know what I mean, way that I experienced you as a person. Right. That there were there were this this sort of like, yeah, I don't know what to say, uh, love or 
Uh, oh. Respect, respect, or you know, whatever, or this uh, uh, seeing each other, you know, which I think is is really is really something something special. And it's interesting that you um, kind of describe sort of like a generational thing, right? You you were the guy who joined Cardiacs in like '92 or whatever. And in 2004 yeah. or 2000, I don't, I don't know these numbers well, but Carvis joined, and so sort of you, you were once the apprentice, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And then you had Carvis as your apprentice somehow. In a way. <laughs> and I think, I think it's amazing. Like if you, if you, if you think oh, about, it, you know, if you think about it, John, this is this is something that you can only experience if you are if you are getting older. You know, like like within wow. like like thirty years, you you can't can't really experience something like that. Forty years, maybe you can get a little bit of a vibe of that. But once you mm -hmm. get to fifty, like then you're like, see, okay, yeah. there may actually be a generation after mine. Know. If you know what I mean, right? And. And so that's that's why I kind of also look forward to not I don't look forward to getting older, but I look forward to seeing what's going to come and what's going to come after us. You know, I'm really um, I'm really curious. About that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a mad thought, you know, the stuff that manifests and brings itself to you, you know, in all these years is it, I don't know. It's so strange. You, you know, like there's this, this this idea also of um, of like you could say like setting an example or uh, creating a reference, right? Like for, for, I think like cardiacs is sort of like reference. Like if more people, if more musicians know about the music of cardiacs, then then they have a different outlook on what they do themselves somehow like you have to kind of like uh, measure yourself against the the art that cardiacs did right or like somebody yeah. like it's it's like you you have something you have something uh, to compare yourself to and uh, or can compare yourself with which which i find very very important and that's why in 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 our times where we have so many brilliant people and um, brilliant people that actually have the means to to leave a trail, you know, to to actually have recorded music out there, and and I think that elevates sort of like uh, the people that are coming after us, if that yeah. makes any sense, right? And oh I, God, yeah, yeah, some yeah, to leave behind, yeah. Trail is a much nicer word than legacy, isn't it? Really, you know, legacy sounds a bit too business, you know, but trail is a nice word. Can, yeah. Sorry, Marcus, can you give me two seconds? Of course. Sorry, I'll course. be back in a minute. Yeah, of course. Maybe do one of those raps you do. You rap to the, the audience. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. There was uh, <laughs> there were two uh, hedgehogs making love in my rubbish <laughs> or something. <laughs> 
that did actually happen last summer actually it was <laughs> i heard weird things in my rubbish and there was uh, there was this uh, this noise going on and i was like i got really scared and there was something moving around in it and then eventually uh, there were two in there and then, and they're kind of doing it and then going on on as well lawn and doing it and i'm like it's like deliverance in here <laughs> it's just so ridiculous but yeah uh, hey chuck doing it in my garden so so um what's next for you then are you uh i mean do you have dates that are constantly being postponed on, on your calendar and stuff yeah 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 and uh Actually, uh, I got some very good news today for some reason that I don't really understand. Um, I was moved I was moved up on the list and I'm going to um, get my first vaccination next week, which oh. I, I didn't really expect to happen until the summer, really. So this is uh, this is incredible. It's very good news. Uh, I have no That's idea great. why why they moved me up, but they did. And so that's great. So I will have the second uh, vaccination in early June. So that means I could go out and work in the summer. There's Correct. like, I mean, there are, I don't know, numerous tours that got that got postponed, like maybe five, six tours or something. And but I think the like, realistically, the first event we'll, we're looking at that may happen is like a, a summer camp that we do in uh, the Catskills in New York which is sort of like a like a one week workshop, let's say. Um, right, yeah. and, and, and that that may happen for mm. people who are vaccinated. And, um, right. and then there's a European tour planned for October for Stickman, which um, I mean, if you ask me if I believe that it's going to happen, I would say no. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, but but if it happens, oh, I'll be yeah. there. You know, if it happens, yeah. I'll be there. So. <laughs> Oh, that'd be amazing, though, wouldn't it? I mean, I, I'm I'm in a similar predicament. I mean, with uh, various life signs gigs mm -hmm. um, on the on the calendar. But I also I don't know if you know this. I I, I play bass and do backing vocals for uh, you know Doctor Hook, the band yeah. Doctor yeah. Hook. Um, oh yeah, 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 Doctor Hook, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah, I, I, that's that's my my other job sort of thing. And we, I mean, we've been doing loads of stuff over the last um, oh, few years. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even going to kind of Australia and New Zealand and places like that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but we have loads of stuff on the calendar, you know. And it's you know, like, like everyone else, we're feeling the kind of thing of having it postponed and stuff like that so it's uh yeah it's, it's pretty tough isn't it you know and you have to kind of treat everything as if it's not going to happen and until it does you know i think that's the way i treat it anyway yeah, I, I, yeah I, exactly I exactly i mean and that that doesn't mean that i'm hopeless right it's mm. just it's just that i i think as long as as there is uh no definite yes that something's going to happen I have to kind of look for yeah. for other ways to uh, to make a living, right? That's that's obvious. Yeah. Obviously, something we like we haven't talked about much today yet. Um, but it's it's for me. It's yeah. teaching. Like I I started to do teaching, and it's been it's been going okay. But then, like the last mm. um, last couple months, so like uh, February and March, were extremely slow. Like, mm. like in a way that I'm all, almost, um, um, you know, anxious, you know, like, and oh, scared. Yeah. But I think I'm pretty sure it's going to pick up again. But right. But, but still, it's. I don't. I don't know. I. The touring. The touring was was great because I. I wasn't. I was never. Um, never rich in any way. So, but I knew that if I go on the road and I'm I'm out for like. 32 days like I come back home and I have a Mount X in my account right and and that, and then I knew okay I'm uh, I can live of that for off of that for like four months right so it was yeah. really and and now it's like every single day I have to sort of like fight and uh, you oh, know, mate, I, have, I know I know 
I know. I mean, I, I watched your, your podcast with Mike Keneally and um, I mean, he was saying that wasn't it like 90% of his work was, uh, was live work, you know, and I, and, I, and I feel for the bloke. I mean, he's, uh, I mean, he's such an incredible talent and uh, it just to see that not getting used, you know, or, or, or seen or uh, it's just, I don't know. It's it's so unfair, really, you know. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's a struggle. It's a, a struggle, and there, there are no answers. And then the worst thing about it is you can't g each other up. You can't say, "Well, it'll be all right because blah blah blah." You know, there isn't any of that. You know, it's kind of like, "Well, no, <laughs> the world's going to end. We're all in the same same predicament." You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't you know. I don't believe that in reality. I. I hope, as everyone does, that oh, uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get through it. You know, and uh, I think yeah. Yeah, I think I think so too. And uh, but that's what I meant. Like even though I am hopeful, it I'm not I'm not counting on what I hope for, if that makes no. any sense, right? Yeah, yeah, I, it does perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a code <laughs> only certain people understand <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah oh it's it uh i you know i mean but this, this is good i mean i i again going back to how we started this conversation you're you've you're clearly turning this into something quite positive by reaching out and talking to people. I mean, like in this case, uh, someone you talk to for three minutes in a noisy room once, you know, but it's uh, it's great to reach out and hear other people's viewpoints on on things and it, um, and it can be, a, uh, we can help each other <laughs> by, by doing so, you know. It's, it's good it's to really, talk. Yeah, it really is, it really <laughs> is. And, uh, and I'm terrible for this because I'm, I'm terrified of the phone. I don't answer it enough. I don't talk to people mm. enough. Yeah. But then push me into it. And I'm like, well, oh, it's all right. You know, in fact, it's quite helpful. And then I, I come away with a spring in my step, feeling a bit better, you know. And um, and it's something that I, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I, mean, it's... I, I didn't, didn't you say that you, you'd felt like you were a loner for many years and then yeah. you, you see yourself in a situation where you're all of a sudden reaching out and, talking to more people than you've ever talked to in your yeah, life it's, you know it's totally it's totally bizarre I, uh, yeah that i have this 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 i would say even like a social phobia like like here this this building that we live in is like 80 80 families in this building and um all very interesting interesting families with, with from mm -hmm. you know different backgrounds and and we have like this this yard which is sort of like a playground for for the kids and um so but I feel intimidated, you know, just to go there and yeah. and chat with the other people. And but the interesting thing is like if I do, if like again, if somebody forces me to go there, uh, then everybody loves me there. It's kind of it's yeah. so it's so <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid, you know. I've I yeah. really I I have this phobia and but, but reality tells me that there's nothing it's nothing of what i feel is real and i know that it's not real but still i can't act right it's a, it's a paradox i can re relate to more than you will ever realize you know it's uh, you might as well be talking about me you know? <laughs> yeah and the phone i mean the phone is a good example like it's the same yeah. for me like and i i realized like maybe even 20 years ago that if i would be you know able to just pick up the phone and call somebody i would be super famous and super rich i, mm. I really i really believe that yeah yeah i mean yeah, it's, yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know so strange so strange it's strange hey um let me ask you something about your um you you were specifically mentioning like your melodic bass playing uh, yeah <laughs> you did you did <laughs> <laughs> and actually um, a, um, a relatively new friend of mine um, who's helping me with these living the dream events that I'm doing he um, 
he had bought he bought the new uh, life science record, which I um, and then I listened to one track, or maybe maybe even just the like a like a little sampler of the tracks that was put on YouTube or something. I listened to that and was uh, paying attention to the bass playing, and man, I I absolutely loved it, and it was really I did. It was like oh, thank you. To me, clearly, like the um, or right, let's say like one of the lead in the sense of I would almost say lead instrument, but like a, like a real counterpoint, like something that had its own its own uh, value. It wasn't just lining out the chords or whatever. It was, and this is why I immediately understood when you said melodic. I think I, I think I understand what you mean. Like this idea of providing a counterpoint to what's happening and. And yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I heard that. So, but maybe from your perspective, what what are you going for as a bass player? Sort of what is, what, how do you see your role there? Well, I, it, it's funny. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm com conflicted as a person, you know, in, in my, in my viewpoints and things as well, but I'm the same in music. I, uh, if, uh, on one, on one hand, I want to now, a groove so and, and I will do so I'll play one note if need be uh, and I'm very very attached to the kick and snare the bass drum and the snare drum I, I, I like that I like the sound of that that kind of pre the precision that you get from that um, but I like to <laughs> I like to stick tunes in as well and to make up counter melodies I like counter mm -hmm. melodies and I've I've always enjoyed it when bass does that you know I mean, i'm trying to think who i listen to i mean i guess mick khan was one um colin molding out of xtc mm -hmm. he's another one he, he, he does some really lovely little runs and and uh, and has a has a i don't know a, a, a performance that's fun to listen to in its own right it's like a little song in its in its own right i guess paul mccartney had a bit of that in the early days you know with the Beatles um but yeah definitely it has to serve the song so it can't walk over the vocals but when there's a moment for it to suddenly wig out and branch off it can do so but I try to keep it so that it's still att <laughs> somehow attached to the drums there are certain things where you can go against it and certain things where you can't I've learned what I think is the right way of doing that. You know, I, um, I've set my own rules for that, but, but they're not really rules. They're, they're um, uh, but, but I, 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 but I also have a bunch of stock tunes that I use as well. But I, then I think that's maybe that's just what people's style is. You know, people who write vocal melodies will write a, a kind of tune. Well, I, I tend to have a kind of tune that I do on the bass. So, um, but I, I like to, I like it to be heard. <laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it to be noticed. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I. I think. I think bass players should be noticed. Um, but but then again, that's nonsense because it depends on the actual track. You know, if one if one note is required, then one note is required. There's this great um, XTC track called. Was it beating of hearts? I think, and it's um, the rhythm is like, boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun. and the song changes around it. All these different kind of psychedelic things coming in, but all of the way through the track, the bass goes, boom, 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 and he never strays away from that one note. And it's just like, yeah, I wish I'd had the guts to do that, you know. So, um, so sometimes, sometimes, yeah, it, it's it's a bunch of juxtapositions of uh, different things happening at different times, but the main thing is that it serves the song, and that it's a sort of fun, enjoyable listen, you know. And uh, I, I like it when people notice it, you know, and I like it when people say they like what it does, and it's uh, I particularly like it when non musicians like it. You know, but people that like listening, but uh, and and they go, oh, there's something that that bass is doing that that I like, and I don't know why. And I mean, the best conversations I have about music are usually with people that don't play, the people that are fans. 
<laughs> like I am, you know. So, so yeah, I, I guess even within the complicated uh, long song arena, I still have a bit of a pop sensibility because I do I do like the pop song as much as I like the extended thing. I love the three minute pop song. It's it's great, and the one thing I. I've made a big point about speaking out about is that I can't handle people's obsession with genres, um, uh, particularly the P word. It's, I mean, um, in the English language, anywhere beginning with P, including my surname, it's a horrible sound. Puh, puh, I don't like it. And you, and you stick rug on the end of that. And it's, I mean, the word rug sounds like it could have come from some Tolkien novel, you know, it's, it's a horrible green word, a prog, it's a, it's a vile word. And, and it's, and it doesn't mean progressive. It's, it, I mean, a lot of the so-called prog rock I hear is, is regressive. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it, it, it falls into the the kind of trap of oh here's the seven eight section here's the bit with the big mellotron, you know it's it, but it follows a bunch of rules and I, and I don't like that but I'm just giving you one example I'm not going to sit here and bash prog because all the life science fans are going to hate me you know but uh, but the uh, <laughs> but but I I've I've got this base that I stuck the words destroy all genres on. Uh, uh, and it and it really means that you know it, it's uh, I don't want to I don't want to be restricted to any one thing and I think everything has got its value and and to not listen to something because you I don't like country and western you know so I won't I won't give anything from that genre the time of day is nonsense you know I, I've always listened to and picked up um, uh, influence from some quite strange places and sometimes they've been very obvious pop things i mean like i mean you you, you might do you know nick beggs the yeah. fellow stick player um he, he was in a band called kajagoogoo and i thought they were brilliant you know, <laughs> because they were they were really strange they they played pop songs mm -hmm. but they, they they did really odd stuff with it and no one a lot of people will not see beyond the funny hairstyles so they won't check it out but God, there's some odd stuff going on in those songs. I've, I, and, I, and I got all their albums. I thought I thought they were great. Yeah. I sat I sat there learning how to play his bass lines when I was 14. And then he played on the first Life Signs album. Mm -hmm. So I had to uh, learn all his bass lines. So I went out and played with them. So I thought, this is a weird turn of events. You know? <laughs> but he's great. And, he, and I got to meet him through doing it as well. And he's a, a lovely bloke. Yeah, yeah. really. I really, actually really, met him. Really, I met him on the boat once. Uh, also. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, but it's it's interesting. Like the um, the way that I found to kind of reframe this uh, thing about genres and all sorts of pigeonholing, right? Is yeah. that you know you need to you sort of like need to uh, allow people to take from the world what they need. So if like, you know, like, as I said, like you and I, we're music lovers, like for us, genres don't matter because we love music for what it is, right? But then there may be other people who need certain um, opinion, let's say, in order to feel feel accepted or in order to feel like they belong somewhere mm -hmm. or, and I think it's, you see, like that, that's kind of like how I kind of like, even though you could say it's like a negative thing that some people are sort of like only looking in one direction but i think there's always something good behind it there's a reason for it let's say it doesn't have to be yeah. a good that doesn't have to be a good reason but there's a reason behind it and 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 that's why i have kind of like stopped even worrying about this but i know exactly i know exactly yeah. what you mean but, right? yeah but, what, 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 i mean what you're kind of talking about is almost like positive discrimination you know or, or, or positive negativity, knowing what you hate or what you love, you know. I mean, there's something, to, there's definitely yeah. a lot to be said for that, I think, you know, and I think yeah. you're right, you know. You know, for um, some people, it's, it's important to kind of know where they belong. And and yeah. if, you can, if you can do that by being a fan of, of I don't know, 
whatever band, right? Like yeah, yeah. Then then that's what that's that's a good thing, right? It's a, it's a good point because at least it's I mean it's positive in as much as somebody is feeling passionate about something. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So in a way, I'm probably on the off on some. A bit of a daft crusade, you know, but like, uh, but it's fun. I enjoy it because I like stirring things up. You know, it's it's good fun stirring things it, up. You, you know, like it was um, uh, Peter Gabriel's Soul, which for me was the album even be, even before I before I discovered Mick Karn, But like Tony Levin's playing on that record and so first of yeah. all, it's great, but also the way it was produced and like the the level of the bass and the mixes perfect because yeah. then and and this is this is the one word i i still want to mention about composition is like i i want each instrument to play a real part yeah. and i don't i don't even know how to how to define it but a part means like the it has to be played like that if it's if it's played differently if it's only slightly changed it's not the same anymore yeah and yeah like like it even goes back to like i think i first had this insight with a band called new model army which i oh, yeah. which i love i love that music yeah. and 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 so also with with the, um the guitar parts that justin sullivan played back then hmm. uh, when there was just one guitarist in the band they it always was a part like you you know like you know, I when I learned tried to play those parts, I realized okay, yeah, this may just be like an E minor and a D major chord, right? But the way that they were played was like, it's got to be this way. It has to in, the, in order to get the sound, in order to get the emotion across, it has to be played this way. And that's what what was my my first understanding of what it means to play a real part, like like right. you know. Like in a in a two part invention by Bach, you wouldn't be playing, you wouldn't be ch changing the bass part, right? No, no, <laughs> <You> no. <play>. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's funny you mentioned them because uh, I used to know. Uh, do you know Moose? He used to play bass with New Model Army. Yes, yes. Yeah, he he used to come to cardiac gigs, so I yeah I used, I used to I used to chat to him a fair bit. I haven't seen him for years actually. Um, but no, that thing of um, not changing stuff. I think I think the only, weirdly enough, my, myself and Carvis haven't um, haven't really done much music together, except for messing around in, in his kitchen a few times. But but the one thing we did do was a friend of ours called Angus Dupre. Or, um, he he arranged a thing. Uh, it was like thun uh, the Firebirds. Uh, you know, the uh, Stravinsky piece of music. Uh, but he arranged it for, I think it was four guitars, four guitars, bass, drums and percussion. And uh, it was a really strange thing. And I don't read music. So he turned up at my house and he uh, played the bits to me. And I, I think I recorded them into a cassette recorder and learned the whole thing and played it. And Carvis got asked to do it as well. So that was the one thing that we did. And I think we we played this weird event. It was like a garden fete or something like that. It was a really, really strange thing, but it was so much fun. And it was great hearing Stravinsky's music, like <laughs> played on guitars because nobody had distortion. It was all sort of fairly clean, maybe lightly driven playing these notes. <laughs> Uh, and of course, you hear this stuff played like that, and it just comes out sounding like Trout Mask Replica. <laughs> it did. It, it sounded like Captain Beefheart. So it was great because I'd, I'd often heard, heard Beefheart and Zappa kind of big up Stravinsky in the past. And, I, and it was just like, how interesting that if you put these things down to just guitars, it sounds like your music, the stuff that you're writing, you know. And it was, uh, it was great fun to do it. Another liberating experience but um but yeah a lot of fun yeah stickman used to play uh a version of that we did the firebird suite we did, oh, five, really? we, we, we did five movements um uh, yeah and we played <laughs> we played that for maybe five or six years like as the uh, closing track for our shows oh yeah 
I'd yeah. say you're, you're, you're familiar with these tunes, uh, then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you did know, you it's... Play, did you get to play... No, 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 you know, it's 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 a fine line. You know, like like saying that there are parts and you, they shouldn't be changed, or is is just I don't know. I think it's the kind of understanding that you need to have in order to change it, right? Or you could yeah. also see it that way. Like, but but then I mean, like what I'm saying here is not like like you know. You know, I've just I've just uh, given a workshop on improvisation, and like the the very first thing I said, and that and it. It's just uh, it's haunting me a little bit it's like in order to improvise you don't need to know anything you don't need to have any skill you just you just do it whatever it is like and you yeah. don't even need a musical instrument for that you just improvise and you can mm. you can even improvise something that's not music you can improvise like yeah right <laughs> you know? and, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and um <laughs> And and so 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 I think that jamming you now know, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so and I think it's the same with with like like all these all the opinions that we have or like that they don't matter like you know let people do what they do and 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 you know there's this uh, well let me let me share this this thing. Um, so at some point I started realizing that there is music that to me seems to come from the love for music like like what mm. we're talking about but then there is yeah. music that may come from like a completely different motivation like some young dude like starting to dress in black and trying you know covering the cure songs or whatever because he wants to have a girlfriend that likes that kind of music okay it's yeah, it's yeah. fine it's fine to have that kind of motivation i think right but yeah. then if 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 somebody like does something like that and turns so it's a professional, right? So the music um, that will then be marketed actually comes, does not come from music, but com originally comes from another kind of motivation. Mm. May, you may, like some people may actually hear that music is not the original mo motivation, but that yeah. does not mean, and this, this was like the big insight, that does not mean that people who listen to the music, like who are just consumers of the music, uh, um, experience that for them it may be a totally um, real and true expression right yeah. of, mu of music and not of somebody's need to get girls and, yeah. <laughs> and you know what I mean I, I think like, yeah. it, it, like because we have always have these two these two uh, translation processes right like one like one is going inside of us and going outside and then if we have somebody else on the other side it's the same there so it has to go through a filter here and then it goes through a filter there and then it goes through a filter back out and then through my filter and so everything's always been filtered at least twice before it gets yeah. to the inside let's say and 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 i think it's the same with music so in the end yeah. it doesn't it doesn't really doesn't really matter where something comes from right like, yeah um, but you can we, we, which, is, which is kind of again a strange paradox because I often put a lot of importance on intent, yeah, you know, my intent in 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 what what I'm doing. But then in the end, does it really matter? You know, no. but does it really matter what my intent you, is? You know, and that's that's why you could just sit down with your notebook, like mm. every every evening, and write down a few lines of text because it doesn't matter if you have the intent to write. <laughs> or if you feel like writing, you can still do it. It's like the yeah. same thing that I said, like I may go, in, go into a studio and just do it because I don't matter. And my intent what? doesn't matter. And like my, my emotional state doesn't matter as long as I can, like what I like in interesting love, what you said about your, your son, right? Like autistic, but functional. So, yeah. so maybe I'm not inspired to make music, but I'm still functional. So yeah. I can make music and even though I didn't feel like I wanted to do it. I do it, and what comes out at the end is as good and as valid as anything I would have done. Oh well, yeah, I mean, right? and that, like, 
Yeah, or, 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 or as you perceive it. Because you know? yes. <laughs> yeah. who knows what they're going to make of it. Yeah, exactly. But again, as I say, the minute it put, you put it out, it's theirs. It's not yours anymore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Which is a very simplistic way of looking at it. Of course, it's still ours, but um, I like the idea of handing something over. Yes, it, yeah. it feels good for me. It, it, it means that you've got you've no longer got any baggage, and you can move on. It's a, a yeah. It's yeah, you see, that. you see, like going back to the, the idea that um, an album or piece of music is like a child. Basically, you have already nurtured the child, right? And like yeah. the uh, like the release date is something like the eighteenth birthday, right? Rather <laughs> than. <laughs> You're yeah. really running with this metaphor, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hang, hang, so hang about, have we, how about his bar mitzvah? <laughs> <laughs> does the metaphor stretch that far? <laughs> I, it probably does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That hang like, about, was he like... circumcised as a child? <laughs> well, yeah. That, that's yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but what, like, what is what is mastering like? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Fifteen years or thirteen <laughs> or? <laughs> yeah, uh, mastering is kind of acne stage, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Oh God. Yeah, well, at, some point, at some point we're all gonna lose our hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, this is this is uh, like a joke that Adrian Ballou um uh, you know tends to make repeatedly also. <laughs> which is like <laughs> like when people ask him like what is what is like the one one tip you would give uh, uh, to a young musician? It's like you know, start start to wear a hat early so that uh, <laughs> people don't even when you start bowling and he's it's kind of it's kind of right you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is i mean i i didn't twig onto the hat till much later you know i i spent uh, an entire career bald i mean you know, it's like <laughs> uh, and tony levin i mean he carries that so well but, but you see he's thin so so he looks good with it <laughs> It's actually amazing to see like this old, like, um, you know, at his place, he has photos from when he was like 10 years old with a double bass and stuff like that. And it's amazing because like, I've never seen him without the, the mustache, right? <laughs> and the, must, the, the mustache really is the main thing, like the, the yeah. bald head, but the bald head is like, you can find lots of people that look like that, but yeah, yeah. But then also, also just this, this, his whole way of being and this whole, this whole vibe is, yeah, dude. And it's, you know, it's, for me, it's a little bit like, I'm, maybe it's a little bit like you joining Cardiacs, right? Like for me, it's, um, when I first, the, the first heard the first few notes of Elephant Talk, Discipline, the album, right? Oh, like, man. like I really, I really seriously, I had the thought and the emo the feeling also I found what I was looking for. It was really like this, this like, Amazing. like I remember that what I like the thoughts that I had in German was like something like, ah, there are people who make the music that I was imagining. Like right. that was that was that was that was my experience listening to Discipline. And so that, so that was a big album for you then, was it? In terms it huge, of huge. It 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 defined oh, my whole my whole right. life. You know, you know, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking to you. That's why I en ended up studying with, with Fripp. And, you know, like, it's it, all of that happened because of that album. Wow. Because yeah. when I first heard that initial, do, 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 yeah. I thought that was guitar finger tapping. I didn't <laughs> realize what, what that sound was, you yeah. know. And, uh, but like I say, it was when I was first aware of it because somebody told me. But um, but there are many great things. Oh God, there's one thing I wanted to talk about on that album. Um, okay, I, I need to recall this now because I've been listening to this track for years and years, 
and I in the last year in lockdown I've only understood the timing of it and it's that track I think it's called Discipline the one where he's talking about the theme in, in discipline in discipline that's yeah. it um now that that intro that dun 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 uh, 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 sorry, I'm, I'm now struggling with the time of it. I thought it was kind of like a, I could never get the timing of it. I didn't realize it was just a swing it's a, thing. It's, it's a shuffle, yeah. It's a shuffle. Yeah, the same yeah. As, the, as the rest of it. So, what is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, because. I didn't hear the shuffle, even though it goes into a shuffle after it. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't put two and two together that that was the same thing. It just sounded like this weird, random, dun, 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 dun. And I was like, what? How are they doing? And it's like, and I watch it live as well. They're doing it in time. How are they doing that? It sounds mm. too random. And then, and then there was, I saw some live footage last year. And then at one point, Bruford, goes into a swingy thing over it. I was like, oh my God, it's just that. It's just, it's just as simple as that. And I was just like, oh God. Yeah. But it was one of those real ridiculous fanboy eureka moments of years and years since I was a kid of not understanding the, the most simple of things. But um, yeah, yeah, but what a track. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, that's that's the magic of music. Like you, because you don't you don't know which what your perspective is to it. Yeah, you don't know where you stand. You don't know what the if you don't know what the subdivision is, it could be any subdivision, right? And that's why. Yeah. And and I also love playing with that because it's sort of like this. It's totally inspiring to me to um, to create music that has this uh, ability to flip, right from from one way of seeing it or hearing it to the other. And I, ideally I would like, there's actually a whole album I did called Face, which is yeah. like, you know, the whole idea of it is that it can be listened to in, you know, from many different perspectives. You can focus in on, on different subdivisions or different cycles or elements. And then yeah. once you start, you know, focusing on one element, everything else starts sounding different. Because yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I just I just love that. It's yeah. I mean, the the thing that I always liked was um, uh, it's the thing where you walk into a room and and you mm -hmm. haven't heard where the one is, so you can hear this little riff start up, and then when the drums kick in, oh wow! There was a, there was a jazz. I guess you would call them a jazz funk band, the Yellow Jackets. Did mm -hmm. you ever yeah, yeah. hear them? And they mm -hmm. they had this one track um, that started off with jig jig like a or so you think. That's what you think it is, but it's like when it kicks in, it's that kind of thing. But you don't know that until the whole thing's coming, you know. So so it's like oh, yeah. There are songs that I can't hear properly because I walked into the room at the wrong time. So I always hear it in a strange place. You know? There's, there's, um, because you you posted um, on social media a photo of Mike Lind up today, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and there's this this uh, um, level forty two track called Kansas City Milkman, yeah, which, which it has exactly that thing. It has like this little sequence at the beginning, which you're hearing the one just on the offbeat, and then the drums kick in and everything flips around. And Do you know why? But because it because it fades in. It fades so you, in, yes. So you don't know where the one is. Uh but I, I know exactly what, what, what you mean. I know I know the track is do <laughs> yeah. um now for whatever reason when that faded in, I I, I heard the one because I, I started hearing it. But I could have easily have not, you know, it could have easily have been a different, different one. But does it still throw you now when you hear it? Okay, occasionally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're not quite conscious. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. Uh, but yeah, I, love that. I love that. That's the beauty of it all, you know, it's, it's great. I actually contacted uh, Phil Gould, who used to be the drummer in Level 42. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to talk to him soon as well. 
on this. Yes, great. <laughs> well, he, uh, there, uh, there were two drummers in the early 80s, well, actually late 70s, early 80s, that I really liked that both played uh, Tama kits, and it was him and Stuart Copeland, mm -hmm. Phil Gordon and Stuart Copeland. And for, although they played differently, I always felt that their relationship with the drums, there was something within it that remind they reminded me of each other for some reason and I, I could I thought well they don't sound like each other but there's something about their relationship with their instrument that brings I, I know what you mean there's like like a certain I would call it maybe explosiveness in the in the groove yeah like, yeah, yeah. like some some sort of forward I don't know I don't know how to call it yeah. but there is something I, I know what you mean yeah and he used to do, uh, Phil Gould used to do this great thing where he would do a fill, but he would carry it on into the beginning of the next, uh, <laughs> well, the first beat and a half of the next bar, you know, and uh, he, he used to do all kinds of fun things. He had a lovely sound as well. It was yes. really good sound. Um, but yeah, certainly those, those early Level 42 albums were um, pretty big for me as well, you know, and... Yeah. Uh, um, you know. re really really great songwriting i mean not not, not so yeah. much on the on the on the first record. i love the first record but yeah then the later record, when they started you know um you know using really interesting uh chord progressions and like the, it was yeah. really it was a, a little bit like even like you know i hate to say it but i i, I really like depeche mode also because oh, like in, right. the, in the in the in the mid, mid 80s they did like already these amazing uh harmonic the modulations and stuff which yeah it's it's really lovely music and yeah they, they were the king of brilliant choruses i mean there were things like do you remember that track shake the disease yeah. uh that that had a lovely chorus and and, and there's that other one um enjoy the silence as well which yes. is a, bit, a little bit later um but um but things like get the balance right oh god i could reel off just name loads of their things but i, I love depeche mode i think I think they're a great band, and uh, and I, and, it, and it's nice that they achieved the success that they did. I mean, they were huge in Germany, weren't they? They were like yeah, yes, and they still are. Yeah, yeah. and actually, the, the last couple of albums they put out, I think, I think they're some of the best. I absolutely yeah. love the last couple of albums they put out. Yeah, I find that you know, like again, like what I said, like this relationship you have with yourself and sort of like this relationship of allowing you know like this this concept in the english language um i well prop, i don't know if it's english english or american english but the the guilty pleasure i think right. that's such i think it's a i don't know from my, my perspective as a german it's a it's a horrible concept it's kind of to yeah me it's, to me it's stupid because it's sort of uh you should you should actually uh love and embrace the things that you love love right it's like why should i have like guilt feelings of guilt enjoying something that gives me pleasure it's, right it's a complete <laughs> cop out it's an absolute cop out it's for people that uh guilty pleasure is for people that care what other people think you know yeah. uh, oh okay. i better not i better not listen to this because it's not fashionable to listen to this and these people are going to judge me accordingly you know so it's a guilty pleasure so that you know i mean uh it's uh yeah i'll i'll, I'll listen to anything <laughs> and I, I and i have no shame so i, I don't fall into that category <laughs> yeah no you know let we we are both fanboys and i think we should we should you know we should be and we should always be fanboys because that's where yeah. we that's where we get our joy <laughs> absolutely and, and, and it's like i say it helped me out this last year because when i couldn't create music i could still go back and enjoy stuff and nice. uh, particularly I, I found myself listening back to a lot of old things and things also picking up on things that i'd missed out on the first time round, you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, i think it's you know, it's, it's been it's been an immense comfort to me. You know, so you know, so it's yeah, long may it live. And I'm 51 years old, and I'm no more cynical than I was when I was 12. You know, so great. <laughs> let's keep it going. Yes, John. Let's um, let's leave it at that. 
okay um, well listen thank you so much i've really enjoyed speaking to you it's been really lovely uh, same for me i mean i've i've um had this idea of wanting to talk to you for years so so wow well wonderful. yeah well it, it's been that yeah an absolute pleasure and as i say i'd i'd watched you speak with other people and i thought oh okay well there's you know there's something there's something to explore here yeah, something to look at and uh it's uh it's been yeah it's been it's been educational you know so thank you thank you very much oh, thank I you really really appreciate it yeah. and uh let's just let's just stay in touch whatever that means Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, I I hope to see you on the next cruise. If uh, yeah, if we're we're, to, we're still we're still booked. Well, I think we are, as far as I know. I think I think Carvis is as well with Gong. With so. Gong, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think they they just uh, well, it's it's going to be two years, right? That's uh, it's going to be. Well, that sounds year, like right? a party boat if ever there was there is one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we could have some fun, you know. Great. Yes. <laughs> okay thank you so much thank you and, thank you. and um, say hi to your family and I'll talk to you very soon thank you very much Marcus absolute pleasure thank you bye bye